Hello and welcome to the 5 Minute Film Club. This week we will be looking at the 1971 thriller The French Connection, directed by William Friedkin and starring Gene Hackman and Roy Schneider. For me, it is a film that manages to elevate the humble thriller into an art form. And there are many standalone sequences that act as masterclasses for building tension and how to craft the perfect chase. The film tells the story of two police detectives on the narcotics division in New York City and their attempts to foil the plans of a group of French drug dealers who are attempting to bring in $32 million of heroin. The two detectives in question are Popeye Doyle, played by Gene Hackman, and Roy Schneider as Cloudy Russo. Now the main reasons this film is cited as being a must watch is down to its realistic tone and its amazing chase sequences. And what makes the big chase moment in this film different is that it involves a train. Yes, that is right, ladies and gentlemen. It is car versus train. And years before Top Gear got there. With the body count rising on the train above, Popeye Doyle in his car down below is racing desperately through the streets, attempting to get to the station before the train does without killing too many pedestrians along the way. It really is a thrilling scene to watch. And is also foreshadowed brilliantly a few shots before, when the camera pans down from the rumbling trolley to focus on Doyle patrolling the streets. Another reason why this film is so highly regarded is down to its shooting style. William Friedkin shoots this like a documentary. Not only do we get lots of handheld camera work, but also the camera feels like an extra character in the room. The actors almost have to navigate round the camera operators and do everything but clearly reference the fact that they're being filmed. Now making this decision to film it in this way certainly made me feel like I was there and made me feel really privileged to witness it, like it was a special expose, a behind the scenes look at a New York police department. Alongside its realistic tone, the other thing that really made me sit up and take notice was its editing. From the opening scene, this film feels like it is working off a silent rhythm track. Now this may be heightened for me because I edit a lot, but it does feel like it moves along to a kind of silent musical score. The, the frantic cuts that happen while we're in Brooklyn are brilliantly countered by the long, calm shots that we get in Marseille's when we're with the drug dealer, Alain. And this helps mirror the characters of Popeye Doyle and Alain and let us understand their very different worlds. In terms of editing the famous chase sequence, Friedkin has said that they cut it while listening to Black Magic Woman by Santana. And whereas that is not heard in the finished film, you certainly get a feeling that there is something ethereal going on behind all the action. At the start of the month, I reviewed another film from 1971, Dirty Harry, with Clint Eastwood and directed by Don Siegel. And there are quite a lot of similarities. Both Doyle and Dirty Harry are anti-heroes and are obsessed with their own style of justice and making sure that it gets served no matter what the cost. However, with the character of Doyle, I think we get a better understanding of who he really is and what motivates him. Yes, the things that he says are morally reprehensible, but I think we also get to see that deep down there is a good guy in there somewhere trying to do the right thing. And I also think Doyle benefits a lot from having a strong character in Cloudy Russo, his partner. Roy Schneider's performance softens Gene Hackman's abrasive character, and I think it's an important way in for the audience. Dirty Harry, on the other hand, is a complete loner, and it leaves him cold but also slightly soulless. I really, really enjoyed watching The French Connection. When I first started watching it, I didn't really know what to expect. And then slowly I got drawn in by the story and the characters, and also witnessing how much effort went into making it. It's a film that joyously lets you see its workings, whether that be the choice to use a lot of handheld work, or just its frenetic editing style in the chase sequences. I think it still stands up brilliantly today. But I feel I should also mention that aside from all the gritty realism that the film has, there are some brilliant sight gags. And I think these little moments of light relief are climax enough. You don't always need shootouts and explosions to finish a chase sequence. I cannot recommend this film highly enough, so do yourself a favour, 
and watch The French Connection. And I will see you next time. If you haven't seen the film, this probably doesn't mean much to you. Hello, thank you for watching, and please remember to subscribe and to leave a comment down below if you completely disagree with me, or if you agree with me, give me a thumbs up.